Hello everyone, my name is Evan Medeiros. I'm the founder of The Trade Risk. And in this video, we're gonna be covering Interactive Brokers Basket Trader tool. So if you're not familiar with Basket Trader, you don't know what it is, we're gonna explain all of it from the start, how to get the most out of it, what types of traders would benefit from using it, and how we personally use it in our trading systems. Now, this is a Interactive Brokers specific trading tool. So I'm not sure if there are other brokers that have similar functionality, but we're specifically looking at the interactive brokers version here, basket trader. Now I should also say that in full disclosure, interactive brokers is our primary broker. We've used them for about a decade now. So we are not new to IBKR by any stretch, but we do have a affiliate referral arrangement with interactive brokers. So some of our links will be referral links. So please do your own homework and research. Make sure this tool, make sure IBKR is a good fit for you. We're big fans, but they may not be the right fit for you. So let's jump right in. We're going to start on their website and their overview of Basket Trader. And very simply, as they put it, Basket Trader lets professional traders and investors trade a basket of individual underlying components as a package. So let's sort of break that down a little bit. What Basket Trader allows a trader to do is to simultaneously submit a large number, or it could be a small number too, but the benefit obviously will come from the increased number of orders. It will let a trader submit simultaneously a large basket of orders to be submitted and put live into the market all with one click. Okay. So how this is useful, there's lots of different applications from a high level, which Probably if you're listening to this, you're not in this seat, but portfolio managers or large funds that are doing custom indexing around a large basket of stocks that involves lots of rebalancing and order placement, they could use a tool like this. There's also market makers and, and even some short-term and retail traders that might be doing some arbitrage strategies across various stocks or a large number of stocks. This is also a helpful tool. And from our vantage point, and what we're going to be spending the time looking at is for swing traders, swing traders like us that can take advantage of cleaner order entries and just sort of a more hands off and potentially very streamlined approach to enter orders, to submit orders, and to essentially automate a workflow is a very good application for basket trader. All right. So we are huge fans. We've put lots of different articles about first off, you know, just trading stocks using daily closing prices or end of day trading. So what we like to do here at trade risk is basically, you know, wait for the market to close for the day, interpret the data, go through the numbers, look apart all, you know, look, look at everything that happened that day and sort of make our judgment or place our trades look for edges after the market closes and sort of build strategies around that slower pace, more relaxed, but still active and tactile, tactile sort of um, time frame for traders. That's where we like to spend our time and energy and build strategies for. And we've got lots of different literature and articles and tutorials on how to do something like this. We're also very big fans of of automation and streamlining and using technology to basically streamline workflows to either make your life easier or to reduce the likelihood of errors. And so for both of these kind of intersection here of end of day trading and automating and streamlining workflows, basket trader plays a critical role in specifically how we trade here at the trade risk. And I want to show you uh, how we do it. And then I want you to think about how this could apply to your own trading. So I'm bringing you to the back end here. This is one of the trading systems we have on our, on our website that we publish that subscribers can um, access, but this is called our Lamerick trading strategy. And basically, at the end of the day, this fully rules-based quantitative strategy looks at everything that happened, looks digests all the market action from, for, from the day, 
and then it spits out signals, entries, orders for the next market open. And so we're looking at just a quick snapshot here um, on September the 19th. When the market closed on September the 19th, our Lamerick system generated these two orders to be placed for the next market open. And sometimes these are gonna be market orders, sometimes there's different parameters. The strategy is, is irrelevant. We're not gonna get into the weeds of, of how we trade here. I just wanna show you the high level application is that these orders are then to be submitted at the open for the next day. And so basically behind the scenes, how we operate or how we do, how we generate our workflow is that we use the basket trader from interactive brokers to submit all of our orders. And this is after the markets are, this is while the market's closed and we transmit everything to interactive brokers and it is live come 9.30 a.m. Eastern time the next day with the exact fills, entries, et cetera, that we want to transact at that next trading session. And so this is particularly important because Lamerick is, is just one trading system of ours. We have a couple and this order entry can actually be pretty long. Like we could have a dozen trades. It doesn't happen too often where there's a full dozen, but there could be five, six, seven entries that need to happen the next day or order management updates from previous positions. And so all of those orders are essentially being calculated, generated after the market's closing, and then it's being submitted that next day. So all of these are neatly packaged and submitted at once. And the way we've built this on our back end is that it is streamlined, it's automated. These baskets are generated for us. In the second half of this video, I'm gonna show you how to build baskets yourself and submit them either through an automated approach or semi-automated approach, that is entirely up to you. So when we think about how we use this, and then if you think about yourself in your own shoes and your own strategy, there's a couple of good market fits, basically. It is for traders that know the levels ahead of time that they want to transact at, right? So if you're a position trader, maybe you're a longer term investor and you're, you know, um, got your entries or your your dollar cost average prices that you're trying to accumulate stocks at this is a wonderful application for it if you're again a swing trader that is looking at things after market closes or even while the market's open that's fine too um, but as long as you have those predetermined levels in front of you or known or ahead of time that's what really makes this shine as a great you know piece in the workflow before we start demonstrating how to actually build a basket of orders and use this tool, a couple of other use cases here could be strictly for order management. So you don't only have to submit basic orders that are buys and limits and, and market orders. You can have your stop losses in here. You can have more complex conditional orders or even algo assisted. Uh, execution order types in here as well. So it is pretty advanced in terms of what you can actually handle or throw at interactive brokers. And we'll put links in the description of this video so you can learn more about this tool and then also just what's available in terms of features and capability. So keep that in mind when you think about how you might be able to apply this yourself. Maybe it's not for the specific order entry side of things, but maybe it's to update stop losses, trail stop losses at the end of the day. Swing traders that love to you know do high hybrid trend following or just adjust stops after targets are hit, anything like that, that has order updates and potentially a larger size of positions on in a portfolio at one time, then this tool could be useful for you. So I think that's it in terms of general overview and context. Before we switch gears and boot up Basket Trader and TWS and start building our first basket of orders. I do want to just mention there is a blog post version of this tutorial of this lesson. If we do have updates to any of the 
you know, just general overview or commentary or how to use this, check out the article version of this lesson. It'll be linked up in the top right of your screen right now. And so without any further, let's switch screens here and start getting our hands on Basket Trader. Okay, moving along. I'd like to show you how to create a basket of orders within TWS itself. And that is Interactive Brokers TWS Workstation, their trading platform for desktop clients. And what you see running here is in fact TWS. I'm running version 10.18. That is currently the latest TWS version. If you are watching this in the future and they've iterated on their version numbers, it is possible that some of these keystrokes have changed. Although I will say these features and, and sort of the functionality that we're going to be using here has stayed pretty consistent over the last years that I've used this software. So hopefully knock on wood, everything is going to line up to what you see on your current version. So if you haven't already, you can launch TWS. I'm on a demo account here just to demonstrate this functionality. And we're going to show you how to get started here with your first basket of orders. So this is kind of just the, the default homepage here. And it's just got uh, a bunch of tickers that's streaming in real quotes and you could create a uh, basket of orders on this. But what I'm going to actually do is just clean things up a little bit. So if you follow my mouse, I'm going to click on the plus tab here and I'm just going to create a new tab within TWS. I can give it a name and I can just say basket order creator, right? We'll, we'll just, we'll, we'll give it a name. We'll call it that. We're going to click okay. And all that does is just give it a name there. And it creates just this blank canvas that we can then work from from. And so, what we can do here now is set up all of the orders for our basket. And so we can, let's just start with ticker symbol Apple, and we're going to put in the stock here. And what we're going to do is say, we're going to place a buy order for Apple. And again, all of this is just hypothetical. I'm just going to show a couple of examples here. I'm not going to go into great detail. I think you can envision all of the different order types that you could set up, but it is worth noting. You can set up pretty complex order types here. You can do stops, you know, entries, market orders. You can have bracket orders. You can have algo assisted execution, which is IBKR's, you know, um, algo orders. So you can actually create some pretty sophisticated and advanced order types here. We're not going to go through all the different permutations, but um, we'll give you some resources on how to find, you know, everything that's available. So very simply here, I'm just going to put a hundred share buy order for Apple at a limit price of 154.83, which is basically where the market's trading now. Let's go to, let's throw Tesla in here and we're going to place a sell order here for Tesla and we are going to switch this to a market order because we want to sell short this stock and then we can throw in uh, Amazon just using the big well-known uh, conglomerates here and what can we do here we could put in a buy order with a let's see good to cancel and let's make this um, how else can we change this up let's switch this to one of their algo orders and let's make this an adaptive limit at 123 with a GTC. Okay. And so again, you can populate this list. You can go right down with as many tickers as you want, but we're not transmitting them yet. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the trade window up here, the trade header and we're going to click on this save orders as basket. Now, if you don't see this natively, when you're just clicking on the trade window, there's sometimes a little button down here, a little arrow that just expands this menu. Because if you're, if you've never used it before, maybe it doesn't show up just yet. But if you click on the expand here, this should sh uh, show up. And so now if you click on the save orders as basket, it's going to give a uh, name here, which is using the name that we created basket order creator. And it's also going to save it in this file location here. So on your hard drive, C drive, JTS, basket order .csv. all of these will be CSV files. That's the way 
Basket Trader uh, operates in terms of uh, interpreting and transmitting orders and saving baskets, always going to be CSV file. And you can change, obviously, the location here if you would like. But I'm going to click OK. And it's going to tell me that the file has been created. I'm going to pull it up here in just a second. OK, so I've got the basket creator open or the basket order creator CSV file open and everything here should look pretty familiar. These are the orders that we just created in TWS and you can see everything that with all the details that we just set up. So we've got our Apple order, which is a buy order and we're using a limit price of 154. We've got our Tesla order, which is a market order. So again, you can see column H is the order type. So you got LMT for limit, MKT for market. There's no price because we are just going to execute at the market price. And that is a sell order. And then we've got our Amazon order, which is our thir third row. And we are we have our GTC time and force. So this is going to be a good to cancel order until it gets canceled. This is staying in the system. It's also a limit order. It's at 123.47, which is where the limit price is going to be. And if you notice column M and N, which is the algo adaptive priority and the algo strategy. So if you recall, we made a adaptive limit order and these are the settings that the uh, IBKR is going to interpret and execute on when we transmit this. Now, a couple of things to also note here are the headers that you see at the very top first row. These are specific headers. So they are, so Interactive Brokers Basket Trader is gonna be looking for these specific uh, keywords basically. And that's what, if you're gonna create a spreadsheet by scratch, which you can do because now that you see this template here, you don't actually have to use TWS to save this file each and every time. You could just open up Microsoft Excel. You could have templates saved with the headers that you want to fill in the information on. And then we can just create from Excel the basket of orders and submit it to TWS that way. That pretty much gives you everything you need here. So this is saved on your machine. You've now viewed it and we've taken a look at what the data actually is. So let's go ahead and, and transmit it. Let's show you how to actually put this into the market. So we can actually clear all this now. We don't need any of these orders. So we could technically, you know, clear all of these uh, orders, but we're going to just leave it there for now. And what we're going to do is we are going to go to our basket trader. What you're going to do is click on trading tools and you're going to scroll down in this list until you see basket trader, which is all the way down here in the multi instrument selection. So you're going to click on basket trader and it's going to open up a new window. And again, you can float this into the old window if you want, but we're not going to touch any of that. And so what we're going to do now is browse for our CSV file that was saved on our workstation. So if you recall that file location that was on your machine, that's what you're going to want to browse for here. So I'm going to do that now. Okay. I've selected our CSV. You can see now we've got the rows populated here in the background, but we also have this prompt first, which is asking us if this is a program index or arb trade or not a program index arb trade. And this is not, this is just going to be uh, the orders that we selected here. So we're not trying to do anything too fancy. So I'm going to click on the no radio button. And here we are. This is all of our orders loaded. And we basically now have the option to transmit this into a lot to make all of these orders live to basically submit all of these orders at once. And so we've got a couple of options down here. First and foremost, you can see at the top again, just all of the different orders. So you can verify yes, day order. Yes. You know, limit market. This was the adaptive order. Okay. This all checks out. These are the right tickers. This is the right quantity. If anything's wrong here, of course we can clear click the clear button and we can um, wipe this out, go back to our basket order, make any changes, and then just simply load it again or browse for it on your uh, computer. Now, if we are ready to transmit, we've got our options down here. So execute basket, we can transmit, we can pause, 
and then we can cancel and then they even have a cancel and reverse. Now there's a couple of additional options here. So we have um, a summary for us. So basically here when we transmit this, and again, this is particularly useful when you have lots and lots of orders. So when not everything is, you know, market orders, or if there's more than just two or three orders, you know, this becomes pretty helpful because this will transmit the stat or this will display the stats, you know, how many orders got filled, what percentage of them are filled, how many shares and how much notional has been filled, so on and so forth. So this is pretty useful once we actually start submitting this and um, working with large amounts of orders. Okay. So what do you say? I think we're ready to transmit this basket file. So let's go ahead and click that transmit button. It's going to ask, are you sure you want to submit all orders on this basketorder.csv page? You can always hit do not display this again. Once you've gotten used to this process, I'm going to click yes. And there we go. So, okay. A couple of interesting things. First off, we did get filled on our Tesla cell. Okay. And so we know that because if we look at our summary down here, take a look at the cell orders filled, one filled, one total, 100% of those orders are now filled for $31,000 notional. But here's an interesting error that we just learned. Our 100 Amazon buy order that we tried to put in there, 123.47, GTC orders are not allowed for adaptive IB algo orders. So if you remember in our Excel sheet, we had our adaptive order type that we, that we, that we tried to submit in here and what we're learning, and this is what we learn at execution, unfortunately, is that we cannot use a GTC order type. It has to be a day order. So it has to be a market. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, an order that will expire at the end of the day. And so what happened here is that IBKR basically rejected this order and we can actually see that. So if you look at the bottom here in our summary, buy orders canceled, you can see that that is one. And so we did not get our $12,000 hundred share Amazon buy order filled. And so we're clicking okay. And if we're looking at Apple, our top order here, we had a limit price at 154.83. If we're looking at the bid and ask right now, it's 155. So that order is in the system. We know that because the status is green. So our limit order is live and active for Apple. It just has not been filled yet. So this was actually a, a good case. I did not realize um, the Amazon Algo GTC uh, conflict there. So that's a good thing that we just learned in real time. And that does show that um, interactive brokers will reject a order type that is not valid and it will display it down here as well. So what I'll do now is I'm actually going to hit, I'm going to cancel. I'm going to show one other example here on how to fix this Amazon. So I'm going to click on um, cancel all, which is now going to cancel all of our current live orders, which is basically the Apple. And then the Amazon, we already had the error in, and then I'm going to click clear the basket. And what I'm going to do, go down to is this sheet here. I'm actually going to just delete the Tesla order. Cause we just got filled on that. And on the Amazon, I'm going to switch the time in force today because that should resolve our algo issue. And I'm also going to bump up the limit price to 155. And I'm not sure where Amazon current bid ask is, but I'm going to just click save. And so I'm going to save this right here back on my machine. Okay. And we are going to resubmit this order type. So, or this basket trade. So I'm going to click on, let me get back to my other window here. I'm going to pull up our, I'm going to click load because I already have the basket file in here. Okay. And so now here's what I've got. I deleted the Tesla row. So I just have the Apple and the Amazon, both buys, both days. And so now I'm going to click on transmit. I'm going to click on yes, I'm sure. 
and here we are both green no more conflict because we switched the day type time and force to day and both are just awaiting their fills so again you can see apple i've got a bid price of a limit price of 155 we're 30 cents over the bid right now and for amazon i've got a buy limit price at 123.47 you can see we're about 50 cents over that right now so these are live orders in the system but they did not uh, they have not filled just yet. So that's it. I mean, that is a start to finish way to sort of create basket um, basket orders. And if we go back to our Excel sheet, again, you can see how I just edited very quickly the cells in here and then just re-uploaded the orders. And that was it. All right, so there you have it. That was our overview tutorial walkthrough of basket orders and basket trader with interactive brokers. Hopefully I got the gears spinning a little bit on how you might be able to incorporate this and maybe streamline or just smooth out your own trading process, either to manage positions or to place new entries. There's lots of different applications, but um, hopefully this was helpful. Now, if you do have any questions, please, drop them below this video, or you can comment on our written blog post. And as promised, we are going to include links in the description of this video. So for documentation and for specific pages for the basket trader on interactive brokers, check out the description for those resources. So that's it from us. Thanks so much for tuning in and we hope to catch you in a future episode.